Hi all, welcome to this new video. My name is Arun Sevier and now we can move to the microprocessor and microcontroller systems module 1. In module 1, we are going to discuss about the internal architecture of 8085, instruction set, addressing modes, classification of instructions, then assembly language programming of 8085. Textbook we are using Ramesh S. Konukar, microprocessor architecture programming and application with 8085. Now we can check some of the basic concepts. So what is a microcomputer? It is a digital computer with a microprocessor as its CPU, includes memory, I.O. etc. What is a microprocessor? Microprocessor is a silicon chip which includes ALU, register circuits, control circuits and it does not have any RAM and ROM. Next one is about the microcontroller. So microcontroller is also a silicon chip which include CPU, RAM, ROM, I.O. devices in a single package. That means we no need to connect any external RAM and ROM to the microcontrollers. But if you are taking the consideration of the microprocessor, we need to connect RAM, ROM, etc. according to our need. So this is an important question mostly asked in all the university exams microcontroller versus microprocessors. So first of all in this figure you can see the microprocessor general purpose microprocessor and we need to connect externally ram rom io ports timer serial com port etc through buses data bus and address bus is connected here but if you are taking the consideration of the microcontroller in a single chip we can see all these type of items that is the cpu ram rom io timer etc all are inside one block that means we no need to connect any external RAM, ROM, IO ports, etc. to the microcontroller. That is the basic difference between them. So in general purpose microprocessor, we need to add RAM, ROM, IO ports and timers externally to make them function. And this makes the system bulkier and more expensive. So if you are adding more RAM and ROM, the system will be bulkier. So if you need to use any small type of systems, we need to use mother microcontroller. Having the advantages of the versatility of the amount of the RAM, ROM and IO ports. The main advantage is that suppose if we need to, uh, to make a system and we need uh, 16 GB of RAM. So we can add externally very easily. But the system will be bulkier and expensive. That's the only problem. But if you are taking the consideration of the microcontroller, the fixed amount of on-chip RAM and ROM and the number of IO ports makes them ideal for many applications in which the cost and space are critical. So one of the main problem of this microcontroller is that we cannot include more RAM and ROM into the single chip. That's the one problem. So in applications, we need very less space. We can use the microcontrollers. Since uh, maybe for some applications, it need only very small amount of RAM and ROM. And we can cooperate, incorporate all these RAM and ROM and IO ports in a single chip. So it saves very large amount of space and we can make the application very very compact the main problem of the microcontroller is that we cannot include more ram and rom into a system that's the one of the main problem of the microcontroller but if you are taking the case of the microprocessors we can add main rams and rom that means 16 gb of ram or 32 gb of ram according to our need but the size of the microprocessor will be very large so microprocessor definition microprocessor is a programmable device that take in numbers perform them on arithmetical or logical operations according to the program stored in the memory and then produces result so actually it is a programmable device which can be programmed very easily and it take inputs the numbers and it do perform some arithmetical and logical operations according to the program that we written in the memory and that will give us the result so this is the basic fundamentals of a computer organization that means you can see input devices output devices cpu which perform the alu functions and there is memory for the storage purpose so these are very simple items then a cpu execute the instructions input devices means keyboard mouse etc and output devices to display the result monitor printer etc then memory is used to store the data so in this figure you can see the microprocessor the microprocessor has also input sections and output sections and memory so what's inside the microprocessor so it's basically consists of main three units that means arithmetical and logical unit that's the alu control unit then array of registers for holding data while it is being manipulated so microprocessor system with bus architecture 
Here one side you can see the microprocessor ALU register arrays controls. Then these are the input and output section. Then this is the system buses, address bus, data bus and control bus are there. Then the memory is about the RAM and ROM. In microprocessor you can see ALU. ALU performs the arithmetical and logical operations. Uh, arithmetical means plus, minus, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. And uh, logical means and or not, etc. operations. Register arrays. There are, there are used for storing data temporarily and it is collection of various registers. There are some different type of registers, accumulator, general purpose registers, special purpose registers. So in accumulator it is the register mainly used for storing a result after the arithmetical and logical operations. Then general purpose registers is mainly used by the users since the users are or the users can assess these registers to store data or doing any other operations. There are also some special purpose registers. That registers is only assessed by the microprocessor. That means the users cannot use that registers since it is designed for some special purpose by the CPU. For example, program counter and stack pointer and these both are 16-bit registers. Program counter, that means the short form is PC, which hold the memory address of the next injection to be executed. That means it will store the address location of the next insertion to be executed. So suppose the microprocessor is executing a program or a, a corresponding line uh, from the memory. So uh, the next line where the next line is stored that address is stored by the program counter. Then the stack pointer the short form is SP and it is used for holding address of the address of top element data stored in the stack. Then control unit Control unit uses for controlling all the operations in the microprocessor and it is responsible for providing necessary and sufficient control signals and timing to all other operations in the microprocessor. Also it will control the data flow between the microprocessor, memory and the peripheral devices. Then we already discuss about something about the buses. So actually a bus is a collection of numbers of wires. So a short form collection of wires is actually called buses so where we can transmit binary numbers one bit per wire there are three type of buses in the microprocessor address bus for address transfers data bus for data transfer control bus for controlling the microprocessor peripheral and the memory so this is the bus architecture figure of the microprocessor 8085 so here uh, by analyzing this figure you can see the address bus is there that means A0 to A15. That means A0 to A15 means 8 into 2, 16-bit is the address bus. So and it is noted here, address bus is 16-bit. And we already know that there is memory, input devices and output devices. So you can see the arrow mark are from the address bus to the memory, address bus to the input and address bus to the output. Then the control bus. Control bus is also an 8-bit one. And here also you can see the arrow marks are from the control bus to the memory, control bus to the input device and control bus to the output device. But if we check the data, you can see from the memory there is bidirectional flow, data flow is there. That means sometimes we need to store data into memory and sometimes we need to take the data from the memory. That's why we are using bidirectional arrow marks here. Then if you are checking the input part, we can only get data from the input. We cannot send any data to the output side. So the arrow mark is only for one direction. That means from the input block to the database. Next, if you are checking the output section, that means the display part, we can only send the data from the microprocessor to the output. That's why the arrow mark is like from the database to the output device. So now we can check what is about the address bus. So we already told that address bus is a 16 bit address line that means A0 to A15 and it carries memory addresses. It operates its unidirectional mode. The address bits are always sent from microprocessor to the peripheral device in one direction that we already seen in the last slide and since it is not reversible there is only one unidirectional flow from the mu p to the peripheral devices. MUP uses address bus to perform first function 
identification of a peripheral or a memory location. 16 address lines are capable of addressing a total of 2 raised to 16. That means 64k memory locations. So the address locations are available from 0, 0, 0, 0. That means 4, 0 has a decimal value 4 of. So 4 f is corresponding to 65,536 in decimal. When the H085 wanted to accept a peripheral or a memory location, it places a 16 bit address on the address bus and send that appropriate signal. When an H085 want to assess, that means to assess one special location in the memory or a peripheral, it is placed that 16 bit address location on the address bus and then send the corresponding control signals. Then next is about the data bus. Data bus consists of 8 data lines that means D0 to D7 and it is mainly used for the carrying of data and this will operate in bidirectional mode. Data can be sent in from the MUP to the peripheral devices as well as the peripheral devices to the MUP. Then the microprocessor used data bus to perform the second function transfer binary information. That means it's mainly used for transferring data and insertions etc. So we already discussed about it there it has only 8 data lines that means 2 raised to 8 is the maximum memory location available. That means 256 memory locations. 0 0 x to ff hex. Control bus. Compressors of various single lines that carry single signals that is it's not a group of lines. MUP uses such third functions providing timing and synchronization by the control signals. The flow is unidirectional one that is from mu p only. So actually these three buses will do the three functions. If you are checked correctly in the address bus it perform the first function identifying a peripheral or a memory location. Then in the data bus it perform the second function transfer binary information or the insertions. Then the third one providing timing and synchronization signals to do the all the works in synchronized manner. So these are all about the buses that mainly used in the microprocessors. Data bus, control bus and address bus. In this the address bus is the only one it has 16 bit. In control bus and data bus it has only 8 bit of data. Now we can move to the microprocessor section 8085 microprocessor so this is the figure of the microprocessor 8085 and is manufactured by the intel corporation in about 8085 it is an the enhanced version of 8080a 8085a it is, is an 8 bit processor which have a 64k memory and it's a single chip NMOS device with 40 pins. It has a multiplex address and data bus AD0 to AD7. That means this data bus is can be used as the address bus also. That's why we are using A4 address and D4 data bus. It works on the 5 volt DC power supply. The maximum clock frequency is 3 MHz and the minimum frequency is 500 kHz. It provides 74 insertions with 5 different addressing modes. 6 registers mainly PCD, EHL. Accumulator is an 8 bit one. And this is the internal architecture of 8085 microprocessor. So this we need to study very thoroughly. There are several blocks and different functions for the each blocks. We will explain more about this internal architecture of 8085 in the another video. Okay, see you all in my next video.